The Associated Press projects Jake Elzey has won the special runoff election in Texas's 6th District. Elzey will fill the seat of late Congressman Ron Wright, who passed away from COVID complications in February. He defeated Wright's widow, Susan Wright, in the runoff, despite her endorsement by former President Trump. It is the first time a candidate endorsed by the former president has lost an election since Mr. Trump left office. For more on this, I want to bring in Joel Payne and Doug High. Joel is a CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist, and Doug is a former RNC communications director and Republican strategist. Doug, I want to start with you. So, uh, as you know, Wright had been endorsed by former President Trump in this election. We know the we now know the results. Uh, is this an indication that perhaps the former president's magic touch is fading? Well, I think his magic touch has always been slightly overrated, and I'll surprise you. I think Joel and I might agree a lot on this topic. Uh, look, Donald Trump is the most coveted endorsement that any Republican can get. But that's not a guarantee of success. We saw that, obviously, in, in Texas last night, where Trump didn't just endorse, but he made robocalls, was extremely supportive um, of right in this campaign. Being from North Carolina, you know, I'd note that uh, Donald Trump endorsed Ted Budd in the Senate race very early, um, just a couple of months ago, at an event for the Republican North Carolina Republican Party. And that didn't cause any of the other Republican candidates to leave the field. Uh, they're still fighting for a new day because they know, yeah, they didn't get the endorsement that they wanted. But they don't. That doesn't mean that they necessarily win or lose. Because Donald Trump is a, still an enormous, influential figure within the party, uh, but he doesn't determine anybody's success. And ultimately, candidates still matter. Good candidates should beat bad candidates, and that's what happened in Texas. So, to follow up quickly, what do you think this means for the 2022 midterms? Well, I, I think it means if you're a Republican, your best course of action is probably to stay out of Donald Trump's firing line. If you want his endorsement and you get it. It's a boost for you, but it doesn't mean that you're ultimately going to win. Those candidates who stay out of his line of fire may be very well served. And Joel, I want to turn to you now. How do you think that uh, Democrats, how closely do you think Democrats watch that race? And how do you think that they can capitalize on this moving forward? Well, I tend to not overreact to any one special election. Um, special elections, as Doug can tell you, can be very unpredictable and uh, probably not a good idea to build your entire political strategy around. But I think Doug makes some good points. Um, I think the president's endorsement is certainly a positive for a Republican. But let's not forget, um, presidents very quickly lose political touch and political power. Um, you know, Barack Obama's endorsement probably is not as golden in the Democratic Party as it was five years ago or 10 years ago. And President Trump might express the same phenomena. I mean, um, parties move on. Um, parties could be moving on from Donald Trump right now. Um, it's probably a little bit too early to make a declarative statement on that. But I do think that um, this does indicate that there is room for pushback to Donald Trump within the Republican Party, and that, that might be the bigger headline here. And Joel, moving on now to the January 6th hearing, um, following that emotional testimony yesterday, what would you like to see happen next? I think it would be really something that would, um, you know, do something for the overall morale of everybody who works in that building. And Doug and I are former uh, Capitol staffers, and I can tell you we probably felt that as much as everybody in that room yesterday, is to just come together with a simple shared state of facts around what happened that day and stop trying to ignore what was plainly visible. As a political measure, look, um, you know, sometimes politics is really simple. Republicans don't want to find themselves on the side with the people who were carrying Confederate flags and beating up police officers. And they don't want to find themselves on the opposite side of police officers who were testifying under oath about their experiences, their awful experiences with an insurrectionist mob. That's not generally the position you want to be in politics. I'm not breaking news here, but I guess for Republican office holders, I think they have to determine whether or not fealty to Donald Trump is worth the embarrassment that they faced yesterday when they had to you know, do counter programming and counter messaging to these very powerful accounts that these gentlemen uh, displayed in that committee hearing. Yeah. So. Doug, I want to ask you, I mean, considering how uh, sort of moving that testimony was and how, you know, sort of cathartic it is, not just for the lawmakers or the people that were on Capitol Hill and the police officers that defended uh, the Capitol building, but also for all the Americans who watched uh, January 6th unfold on the air. 
Uh, do you fear that Republicans might end up putting themselves sort of on the wrong side of history here by not taking a more proactive role uh, in these hearings? Well, I think that their big mistake actually was not supporting fully enough, and, and a lot of Republicans in the House and Senate voted for it, uh, just not enough, supporting an independent commission. If you want to take politics out of things, you take elected officials out of things. And so if you had former members of Congress, former senators who were kind of he heading this, um, or top administration officials, um, FBI, DOJ, uh, and so on, um, in an independent way, you take the politics out of this. And so, you know, what we saw yesterday, right. which was a extremely gut-wrenching to kind of live through again, uh, we, we saw a very political situation taking place within the Capitol of where Republicans quite often, not meeting Liz Cheney or Adam Kinzinger in this case, were saying what they said anytime Donald Trump tweeted something outrageous or crazy over the past five years, which essentially was, I didn't see it. And for the ones who aren't going to be the big spreaders of misinformation, because that's how far they've gone down the Trump train, they feel that I didn't see it is their best way to get out of this move forward and try and put Donald Trump in the rearview mirror. The challenge is a lot of these people are going to be available for subpoenas, and that's something they won't be able to escape, cause more problems politically for them down the road. Right. As you mentioned, as the Justice Department has just cleared the way for that to happen. All right. I wish we could continue this conversation. We're out of time. Doug, hi. And Joel Payne, thanks to both of you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.